Now, let's talk about the growing issue of critical race theory in America. I'm delighted to welcome Darren Grimes, Britain's most compelling commentator, star of Reasoned UK, a popular news channel found on YouTube. Darren joins me now. Hi, Darren. Good to be with you, Mark. Great to have you back on the show. What's the story here? Well, so the the proposal is actually that laws forbidden the teaching of critical race th theory are moved in state assemblies across America. And Mark, I have to say, I, I, I must, I support this. I really, really do. Because critical race theory, for those that don't know, listening to this, I don't know how you wouldn't know, given that over the last 15 months, Mark, it seems, since the death of George Floyd, it seems like all we've spoken about during this the days of the pandemic yeah. is absolute quackery like this in my eyes. So critical race theory is essentially the teaching or indeed the, in my eyes, indoctrination of the view that being black is to be a victim and that being white, an oppressor. And I think it's quite clearly palpable and nonsense and divisive and frankly not based on any evidence in a country that enjoys race relations one as fantastic as our own america has its problems of course but i can understand why people do want to ban this and stop moves in this direction because it does convince children that based on their immutable characteristics based on the color of their skin the accident of birth that they are inherently privileged in some way or an oppressor in some way. And we had in this country, the equalities minister, Kemi Badenoch, who came out and she actually said in a Kraken speech, I think it was in October of last year, she came out against this sort of quack dogma and she made it clear that the UK government doesn't support it in this country. And in a similar vein, when there was a review into the efficacy of unconscious bias training by the UK Cabinet Office, guess what? They found absolutely no changes in behaviour and zero long-term effects on equality at work, which is surely what it was set up to do. And you just, all of these things, it go, all goes back to this idea that what is really important after the death, uh, admittedly a horrendous death, of George Floyd, that what's necessary now is any divisive move that these activists can get their hands on. Because, I mean, peddling these ideas in this country, for example, Mark, and I bet you it's the same in many of the states that voted Donald Trump in November of last year. I look around at my patch of County Durham and I struggle I really, 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 really mean this. I really struggle to find any evidence. You know, when I was at school collecting free school meals, the grandson of a minor, the, the son of a single parent, I struggle to see any overwhelming evidence of quote unquote white privilege. How dare you suggest that people in places like this, and there are their parents, we have sister sort of states in America, no doubt, that look somewhat like County Durham, former industrial heartlands. How dare you say that we are guilty of white privilege? You know nothing about me. So yes. that's my view and on that. And you don't Mark. have to go on a course to have the racism coaxed exactly. out of you. I mean, the, the principle of this critical race theory, as you've suggested, is that it implies anybody that isn't from a black or minority ethnic background is somehow just born racist. And mm -hmm. my biggest concern with that, Darren, is that it's very divisive. It will make people angry, but it also lets the real racists off the hook. Of course it does, because in so many ways, and we see this with homophobia, we see this with transphobia, we see this with so many isms or phobias. I could go on and on with that list. It seems to be ever grown. The problem is, bandying about these words, you dilute the severity of the words. Genuine cases of homophobia, of course, should be taken very seriously. Genuine cases of transphobia, of course, should be taken very seriously. Genuine cases of racism absolutely must be taken seriously. But the issue is that we are really are in the, the way in which these words are used in scenarios like this, 
some quack theory that someone has come up with to sell a few books, Mark. The, the idea of white privilege and saying that we're all inherently racist. You dilute the severity of those things and actually divide us, not just here, but in the United States of America. And I don't think that's truly a desirable outcome. And far from, you know, in the days of the very laudable aims of Dr. King, when we were talking about judging people on the content of their character and not the color of their skin. If anything, these activists want us to focus entirely exclusively on the color of our skin or our identity. And it is the most divisive thing you can possibly do. So I will always be opposed to this identity politics stuff because I do think that one, it's taken our attention away from issues that actually matter, Mark. You know what? We, you and I shouldn't be talking about this stuff. We should be talking about all of the businesses up and down the country that are going to be suffering because June 21st isn't going ahead, yeah. because Freedom Day isn't going ahead. Instead, we're talking about some quack theory that some divisive activist has come up with. To well, try and convince a nation that they're a bunch of racists. I agree. Lots of tweets coming in. Well said, Darren. Darren for Prime Minister. We love you, Darren. I mean, you've got a proper fan club here, which is why we love having you on the show every week. It's difficult for me and yourself as well, Darren, as a broadcaster, to keep up with the correct terminology. You're not supposed to say yeah. BAME anymore. Black and Asian minority mm. is the correct uh, orthodoxy at the moment. Uh, of colour. So someone of colour, that was OK, I think, a year ago. It's not OK now. Um, and I've got one word that I think might help. OK, it's a bit of a kind of a life hack, uh, which is a politically correct term to describe everybody in this country. And it starts with B. Mm, British. British. Mm. Right. Will that do? We're all mm -hmm, British. That'll do. That'll do quite nicely. Yeah, exactly. A Jewish, black, white, Irish like me, Geordie like you. We are all British. We and are. We love our uh -huh. country. We do. And we're, I, we share in the fact that we have values, British values, that say that we will judge you on the content of your character and not the colour of your skin. And, and I thank Sikhs, God. Sikhs and Jews and Muslims and Catholics and Christians yeah. and Quakers mm -hmm. will be cheering England on against Scotland. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Late, later <laughs> absolutely. in the week. Absolutely. Definitely. Exactly. Um, yeah, we've got, haven't we? I, I'm going to get to a call, Darren, but we've just we've got to come together as one nation and one society and one community. And I think that, you know, sort of from on high, you get these academic ideas like critical race theory. But on the ground, people do just want to get along. And in communities, yeah. Britain is quite integrated. Of course they do. And one of the really, really sad realities is, and I, before I let you get to your call, is that the fact of the matter is, I think only a few years ago, we weren't focusing on people's identity like this. We weren't divided as a nation like this. We were actually just getting on and not actually noticing. You could walk down the street and not notice, be friends with someone and not notice that what identity boxes they tick. And that's the really sad reality of this stuff. It divides us. That's why we have to reject it. We are all British. Let's be united in that fact. I think we'll have some applause. Come on, if Darren can't get a round of applause, no one can. Amy, do your worst. <laughs>